subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. Hello and welcome. Welcome to our history lessons today on your favorite learning channel, Joy Learning. I know this is one great platform that you have that is really helping you in your academics. So it is great to come your way once again. And as usual, I'm here for history. And as I said, when I say history time, it's African history time. It's a time for us to share what we have in common as Africans. My name is Frank Eduasare, and you can just call me Wolof. Wolof. So the subject or the topic for today, the subject is history. The topic for today is civilizations and cultures of the West African Sudan. West African Sudan. Um, in our previous lessons, we've looked at civilizations from the north, and that is, we studied about Egypt. We looked at the Bebes. We've looked at Swahili from East Africa. We've also looked at the Axumai civilization from East Africa. Now we are within our own um, environment. We are within the West Africa uh, region. West Africa is divided into two. We have the West Africa Sudan, which deals more um, with the Sahel region. And then we also look at the West African coastal states or the West African coastal civilization which also deal with the coastal bit. So there you'll find Ashanti, you'll find the Dagumba and all, the Yoruba and the rest. But today, the emphasis is on West Africa, Sudan, which is the Sahel region. And here we are going to look at civilizations like Ghana. We'll look at civilizations like Mali. We'll look at Songhai, Kanembonu, and the Hausa states. These were powerful uh, medieval African civilization from West Africa. So let's set sail, my friends, as we get fired up for our history. So, the, so West Africa, Sudan refers to the savannah belt of West Africa. West Africa, Sudan refers to the savannah belt of West Africa. It stretches from the Atlantic coast in the west to the region of Lake Chad in the east. So specifically, we are defining West Africa. So ECOWAS, we are, that's, what we, that's the definition we are giving ourselves. In your shots is the map, the, the map of West Africa, Sudan. So, as I said, basically it's, it's about West Africa, ECOWAS. So you'll find the Kanembonu, the map or where Kanembonu covered, you'll find Songhai, you'll find Ghana, you'll find Mali. And at the extreme right, which is the extreme west, you'll find Wolof. And I tell you every day, call me, call me Wolof. So maybe you want to know why, I'll tell you. So Wolof is there. Then in the Atlantic Ocean, you'll find the Cape Verde Island, which is also part of West Africa today. But basically our discussion is going to be centered around the map that I'm showing you. And our first point of call is Ghana. Ghana. The Arabs call this area Belak Sudan, the land of blacks. So you take this West Africa Sudan area which we say the, the description is east to Lake Chad, west to the west coast of, yes, to the west coast of, of, of West Africa, the Arabs this area, Belad as Sudan, land of blacks. It was this area which witnessed great civilizations like the empires of Ghana, Mali, Songhai, Kanembonu, and the Hausa states. And so the first civilization to have emerged from this area was the empire of Ghana, the empire of Ghana. So probably we want to link up Ghana and Ghana today. Were there any relationship or some similarity? In the course of time, we'll get to know, probably when you get to form two. This is form one senior school um, history as we are discussing. These great civilizations of West Africa flourished in the sixth and ninth centuries AD. It is significant to note, however, that these states and kingdoms had or shared similar socio-political or socio-political cultural characteristics. The civilizations that emerged from this area shared similar social, political, and cultural characteristics. 
And we have, we have said that civilizations were Ghana, Mali, Songhai, Kanembonu, and Hausa. Now we look at ancient Ghana Empire. Ancient Ghana Empire. In your short is a map of, um, of Ghana Empire. And also you see our own Ghana today. And as I was asking, uh, could there be any relationship? Could there be something similar? Could there have been some historical relationship? Maybe yes. Maybe as we get along, we'll get to know. But in your short, you'll find the old Ghana Empire, which you can find today in Mali. Ghana Empire today is situated around Mali today. And so you, that is where you see it. The capital was Kumbi Saleh. Ancient Ghana was the first empire to emerge in an area known as Western Sudan. It was founded by the Soninke group of people in the 8th century AD. And it was defeated by 1235 AD by Sundiata in the Battle of Kirina. I've just highlighted some, um, some names and some points there. Ghana was founded by the Soninke group of people. Ghana was defeated in 1235 by Sundiata in the Battle of Kirina. You take note of that. It is believed that 44 kings ruled the empire until its fall in 1235. The native Soninke spoke the Mande language. The name Ghana meant warrior king or war chief. The name Ghana meant warrior king or war chief. One of the greatest rulers called Kaya Megan bore this title. But from the 7th from the 7th century onwards, the title of the king became the name of the empire. The actual name, however, of ancient Ghana was Wagadugu. This is something that uh, I know will beat a lot, of, a lot of minds. Because every time we talk about Ghana empire, Ghana empire, Ghana empire, yes. But the, the original name of that empire was Wagadugu. The name Ghana was a title that was born by the king who ruled Ghana. But this name became popular. So, for example, from wherever you come from, the title of, um, of I mean, the title that your chief bears. So, the, the very practical example that quickly comes to mind is, for example, Otunfo Asantehene. I mean, everybody knows that that is the name. That is the name. But then, Otunfo then becomes the name of Asante. That is how the whole thing came about. So then Asante, more or less, get to the, to the backdrop. And then Otunfo becomes the name of Asante. That is exactly what happened. The actual name of Ghana Empire or Ghana was Wagadugu. But the title that the king bore, the powerful king at the time was Kaya Megan. He bore the title Ghana. But in the course of time, Ghana then became popular, renegating Wagadugu to the background. This is an explanation that I need to give you. In your shots is Kaya Megan. Very powerful chief. On your immediate right, you find a chief sitting in his palanquin. On the other side, you find him on his horse with his, um, with his fighters or soldiers around him. This is the king that we are talking about, Kaya Magan. He was the one who bore the title Ghana. But over a period of time, the title that he bore rather became the name of the empire Ghana. Renegating the actual name Wagadugu to the back um, bench. Al-Fazari, an Arab traveler and astronomer, was the first scholar to give an account of Ghana. Al-Fazari, Al-Fazari, an Arab traveler and astronomer, was the first scholar to give an account of Ghana. This was in the 8th century AD. Throughout her history, ancient Ghana did not have a single capital. The capital city kept shifting from place to place. So, for example, we can link up with Ghana. Once upon a time, the capital city was Cape Coast. It moved to Accra in 1876. We are not saying it will happen, but you never know. There may be another capital city that we may build later. But that is what we are saying, that Ghana Empire, which, whose original name was Wagadugu, never had a single capital. It kept shifting and shifting. At the height of its power in the 11th century, the capital was located at Kumbi Saleh. At the height of its power, the capital was located at Kumbi Saleh. In your shot is a beautiful city of Kumbi Saleh, which was captured on the internet. Well laid out, nicely built um, structures, 
and this was the capital of Ghana, Kumbi Salem. The rise of Ghana Empire. The rise of Ghana Empire. So we've given ourselves a little background. That Ghana Empire was built by a group of people known as the Soninke. The, 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 the empire fell at the Battle of Kirina, 1235. We've again gotten to know that its capital city kept shifting from one place to the other. But at the height of its glory, the capital city was Kumbi Saleh. So like all other kingdoms, they rise and then they fall. They rise when they had achieved a lot. And then they fall when certain things do not go right. Now let us get to know the rise of Ghana Empire. The rise of Ghana Empire, which has occasioned um, the popularity of Ghana Empire that we study today. Several factors accounted for the rise of ancient Ghana Empire. Some of these reasons are discussed here and there. The empire was located at a very vantage geographical area where Tagaza, the salt producing town, was situated north of the Sahara, and Bambuk and Bure, which were major gold producing areas in the south of Ghana. Ghana therefore became a major market center for gold and kola nuts from the forest areas as well as salt from Tagaza. It made Ghana a prosperous empire. So the geographical location, the geographical location of Ghana made it a very strategic town where trade was booming, where from where it was located, it had salt producing sites. And you take note of the, the city that produced the salt, Tagaza, 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 was a salt producing um, site. They also had gold. And so people came there to trade. And out of that, they made a lot of money from it. And it's true. If you check our cities and towns, even here in Ghana, where they are strategically located, they make it, I mean, businesses actually goes on well. Um, and I know quickly some names come to mind. I am remembering one market center, markets at Asasewa. Asasewa has become popular because of the market nature of that town. So people converge, people go there to do business, and it gave Asasewa the name. And also people made money out of that business. So the strategic location or the geographical location of towns plays a major role in its prosperity. In your shots is um, the city of, of Kumbi Saleh, which we are saying was strategically located. I mean, you could see the structure a little bit in ruins. You could see that it was well built. You could see that wealthy people lived in this city. Why? Because of the numerous businesses that took place there. Again, Ghana was located in an area where the land was fertile. So factors that really ensure the prosperity and development of nations, one is the strategic locations of such towns. The second point we are saying is that if the, the land of that area is fertile, what it means is that agriculture would do well by all means. So Ghana was located in an area where the land was fertile and was good for agriculture. This made it possible for them to produce more to feed themselves and to sell the surplus. And I'm sure when we compare Ghana today to old Ghana, today also Ghana is a land that is so fertile. Everywhere within our country you can plant. So if indeed we are really on our knees and we really want to work, we can produce a lot, we can eat and also sell what we cannot and even can it for export. So the second factor which led to the development and rise of old Ghana was the fact that Old Ghana was a very fertile place. It was a very fertile place. The third point we are raising, which again led to the rise and development of Ghana Empire, or Ouagadougou, was the fact that it was blessed with able leadership. As a matter of fact, leadership is everything. If you have fertile lands, if you, have, if you are properly located in terms of uh, geography, if you don't have leaders... If you, if you lack leadership, I'm telling you, you will never prosper. So the third factor which contributed to the rise of Ghana was the fact that Ghana was blessed with able leaders. Leadership, leadership is key. 
the kings of the empire, together with their council of ministers, spearheaded the progress of the empire. So leadership is so central. And leadership devoid of arbitrariness, leadership devoid of dictatorship, leadership that combines with um, council of members or council of elders, um, with the people who surround the leader, to think through and think well for the development of such areas, they always do well. Ambitious leaders, leaders with foresight, is so important for the development and growth of any land, any country. So the third point we've raised, apart from the strategic location of a city, apart from the fertility of the land of the area, is also leadership. Leadership. Ancient Ghana became rich and was able to expand because the government used all taxes it collected from traders to the good of the people. This was because the empire was located on trade routes. So the resources from, from, from Ghana empire was used very well by the leadership and it was to the good of the people. And so when you look at the city and the picture that I showed you, you see that they had beautiful um, landscape, they had beautiful houses, and it was all because of the leadership that they had. The taxes that they collected, they made good use of it, and this really helped in the rise and development of Ghana Empire. Bear in mind, the name actually is Wagadugu. In order to make good policies to administer the empire to the benefits of all, the ancient Ghana kings employed Muslim scholars into its civil service to help run the day-to-day -day administration of the empire. Some served as ministers and others served as advisors to the kings. So you need loyal members to actually help in the development of any, any community, any state, any country. And we are getting to know that the civil servants were up to the game. All hands on deck, they worked hard to the progress and development of Ghana. And I mean Wagadugu. So we can draw inference and come to our country. Are we really hardworking? I'm telling you, as you sit there watching me, future leader, please, our country can only progress and develop when we put our hands on deck. We work hard um, to see the progress and development of our country, Ghana. And fortunately, our name is Ghana. Old Ghana, too, of course, was Ghana. And so we can develop together from the experiences that we are sharing. The workers were hard workers. They were not selfish. They were committed to the cause of Ghana. And it's the same that we also have to do, whichever field you work in. And as you students coming up, I'm challenging you that you can make our country better when you, we all get to the wheel and work hard for the progress and development of this beautiful country called Ghana. The empire had well-organized armed forces of about 200,000 men, of which 40,000 were in the cavalry. Cavalry are those, the soldiers who um, sit on the backs of horses. They sit on the backs of horses. So the empire was able to raise 200,000 men as soldiers, with 40,000 of them um, as cavalry. The military maintained peace and security, defended the empire against foreign aggression, and also collected taxes which made the empire very rich. And this is a very important point, that the empire developed at the back of a well-organized, disciplined army. And I'm pretty sure same we have today in our country. When we check around us, I mean, in terms of our sub-region, there has been some um, turmoils. Ghana should not be an example. We should not fall prey to such um, turmoils. And so we should stand on our feet and work hard for the development and progress of our country. And the military plays a very important role in this agenda. The fall of ancient Ghana. I told you, anything that rises actually falls down. When you rise, you will come down. Uh, but it's important before you fall or you come down, you would have, you know, developed wherever um, you, you were before. And so just a quick um, wrap-up, we are saying, not a wrap-up, but that's a quick um, summary. We are saying that Ghana Empire rose to the level that it got to why we are, and also why we are studying it, because it was blessed with able leaders who really thought through ambitious design, ambitious programs to see to the development of old Ghana Empire. 
we've again said that the land was blessed with fertility. The old Ghana Empire was blessed as a fertile area where they could plant and, and eat from their soil and even sell their surplus. We have said that uh, it was also strategically located. And so trade activities went on well. And I'm sure Ghana can also claim same. Um, we are again, we have again said that they had well organized military. The military actually protected um, old Ghana Empire. And we are so proud also that our country has same. And out of that, old Ghana Empire developed in peace. And as we draw inference, as we draw similarity, we're also saying that because we are Ghana, we are also going to chart that same path that we are going to progress in peace with the support of our great armed forces. Now, the fall of ancient Ghana. Before we go into it, let's discuss what in your, under, what in your estimation could have caused um, Ghana to fall? I mean, such a, um, an empire that reached such heights, what could have caused it to fall? Within our own spaces, what do you think um, when somebody achieves, what, what do you think can bring the person down? What do you think can bring the person down? The examples, I know you have them, but we are going to zoom into it and get to know what brought great Ghana, better still, Wagadugu, down. The introduction of Islam into the empire divided the people into traditional and Muslim worshippers. So religion is sort of creating a problem for old Ghana here. With the introduction of religion coming from the northern part of our continent and clashing with the indigenous traditional um, African traditional religion, they did not gel too well. This led to suspicion and mistrust among the people. To make situations worse, the conquered states of Diara and Kanyaga were not effectively assimilated into the empire. They were allowed to be ruled by their own traditional rulers, which made it easy for them to fight for their independence. This led to civil wars which destroyed property and got men killed. So whenever there is division, whenever people do not gel, whenever there is no peace, what happens is that there is always chaos. And where there is chaos, there is no prosperity. Where there is chaos, there is no development. And so it is important that as we live in our country today as Ghanaians, it is important we keep our peace. It is important we keep our unity. It is important we don't allow ourselves in any way to be divided whatsoever on which grounds, religion, on party politics lines, or whatsoever. It is important we remain united as great Ghanaians so that with that, we can progress. Anything short of this will create problems for us and we'll be laughing at the wrong side of our mouth. So from what we are studying, we are getting to know that the introduction of Islam, mixing up with a traditional religion, did not go too well. And of course, this led to um, divisions among the people and eventually civil war, which destroyed great Ghana. So we have to learn from it, my friends watching me. The empire was attacked from outside, which eventually led to its fall. The Amoravids, this was, um, okay, let, let's go. The Amoravids invaded Ghana in an attempt to introduce an unadulterated Islam to the people. The Amoravids came from Morocco. They came from the northern part um, of our continent. They came from North Africa. And they wanted to introduce what they termed an unadulterated Islam to Ghana. And so they attacked Ghana from outside. But how was it possible? Bear in mind from the first point we raised, it had become possible because there was division in Ghana. There was no unity. And because of that, it made it easier for anybody to attack Ghana Empire from outside. And that's exactly what happened, that the Amoravids were able to come in to actually attack Ghana and to defeat it. This Bebe Islamic group captured Ghana in 1075, killed many Soninke traditionalists who did not want to be converted to Islam. And if we remember, we said the core group of people who actually founded Ghana Empire were the Soninke people. And in the course of time, they accepted Islam to the extent that they employed some Islamic scholars to, be, to, be, uh, to work in their ministries and to manage or to man very sensitive areas. So gradually, Islam was 
was dripping in, but it was not holy. So those who were traditionalists and were not so comfortable with the new faith that was coming in, they could not see eye to eye. And this kind of opened up old Ghana and caused it to fall. That there was unity. Internally, there was civil war, and that gave room for people beyond their borders to attack. And this is an example by the Almoravids. Some of the kings became complacent and therefore did not adopt effective means in administering the empire. They were bedeviled with succession disputes which led to civil wars and as well wasted the energy of the empire. And I think we can relate to this, my friends. These are, these are issues so fundamental that brings great um, nations down. Even within our various communities, chieftaincy disputes, succession disputes, this one wants to go. This one wants to come. So whenever there, there's no peace, whenever there's no agreement to chat a common cause, there's always a problem. The third point or fourth point we have raised was the fact that the kings became complacent. I mean, after all, Ghana Empire was a powerful empire. They had, they, it was a wealthy empire. They felt that nothing at all could happen, in, as a matter of fact, to bring it down. So out of that complacency, they did not really do what they were supposed to do. And so it led to the weakening gradually of Ghana Empire. Coupled to this was the fact that it was bedeviled with succession disputes. Because the empire had become so rich, everybody wanted to become the, the chief. People who so were right to do and people who, you know, were not even within the line of succession. So there was a succession, a succession dispute. And this obviously wouldn't bring about peace. And so it led to civil war. And as it led to civil war, the empire became weak. The empire became, you know, anybody at all could come in. And so it led gradually and gradually to its fall. There were disturbances on the Marrakesh or the Ghost trade routes, which did not ensure smooth business. It therefore shifted business away from Ghana which caused the empire a great deal of revenue. It no longer had the opportunity to collect taxes from traders as it used to be. The last straw was when the Tuareg took back August, an important trading post. So gradually, you are beginning to realize that the nation that was once at the, at the top was, had gotten to its height, very rich, prosperous, um, very powerful leadership, very focused, able leaders, um, well located with very strong standing army of about 200,000. What then could have caused their fall? We are getting to know that when the empire began to lose or lost its sight, when the empire began to, I mean, the leadership became complacent, then things gradually, you know, began to, to crash. And so we are saying that the market centers, because of these confusions here and there, the market centers which were giving the empire money were located. So there was relocation. And of course, market brings in money because with markets, you have a lot of taxes. Um, people bring food. There's markets within those areas. So people get money and they're able to develop. Let's quickly avert our minds to a very important town um, in Ghana, and I'm using this as an example. I'm saying in Sawom, for example. And Sawom used to be, you know, a very sprawling, very rich and um, wealthy. The businesses were really booming there. That was when the road from Accra to Kumasi was, you know, passing through that town. There you see people selling bread and all manner of things, and they were making some money. Now, when the road was moved from there to the new site, You've, you've realized anytime you go there that the energy is a little bit down. And that's exactly what was happening. That old Ghana Empire, um, the towns, so Marrakesh, other ghosts, these were trade routes out of which the kings were getting some money taxes from, had been moved away to other places. And so it was no more a serious market center where businesses were taking place. And so they lost the opportunity of getting taxes. And of course, we know it is taxes and taxes that we use to develop nations. In AD 
1235, by AD 1235, as we, we saw earlier, Ghana was defeated by Mali under their able leader, Sundiata. He killed Sumanguru, county of Ghana, in AD 1235, and finally was incorporated into Mali. So what we are saying is that after Ghana Empire emerged, the Mali Empire, and from the map that I showed you, uh, that is within the West Africa Sudan area, you saw Songhai, you saw um, Kanembonu, you saw Ghana, and you saw Mali. Mali took over and became the second empire within that space after the fall of Ghana in 1235 AD. And this happened during the Battle of Kirina, which saw the death of Sumanguru Kante. Now, how did they come to this level? We have realized from the discussion so far that Ghana Empire, which was once a rich, prosperous empire, which had everything, they had able leaders. And I'm going over for you to, to have the, the, the graphs for you to really understand what we are saying. That the empire was so rich, it had fertile lands where they could produce all kinds of fruits and, and vegetables. They had enough to eat and they had enough to sell as surplus. Because of this, they had money. And if you have money, what obviously happens is that you are able to develop. We've again said that Ghana Empire was blessed with able leaders, visionary leaders who were able to think far uh, for the development of Ghana. Now we've again said that it was strategically located. And out of this strategic location of Ghana Empire, they had a lot of money because businesses and trade was taking place there. It was also located on trade routes. So anybody who was going to the northern parts of our continent, to say Morocco, to say Algeria, you have to pass through Ghana. And if you pass through Ghana, what it meant was that the kings would have collected some taxes. And out of these taxes, they, were, they used it to develop Ghana. We've again said that they had a strong standing army. And the army actually protected um, the peace of, of Ghana. And Ghana, I use it because, it's, as we have I've told you, Ghana actually was the name or the title of the king. The actual name of the empire was Wagadugu. But of course, Ghana took over. So we are saying that they had a strong standing army, and the army helped actually in protecting the peace of Ghana so that businesses and other things could go on progressively. The, the army also collected even taxes on behalf of the states. And so the state had enough of money to develop. We have again said that out of this, which really brought some money and, and, and help in the development of Ghana, we've again looked at the fact that all things that rise, a lot of times, a lot of times they fall. But why do they fall? Why did Ghana Empire fail? We've realized or gotten to know, we've learned some few minutes ago, that Ghana fell because of complacency on the part of the Akins. So you think that you are doing all well and you begin to, you know, not to take things serious. I tell you, you fall. So you, as you sit there, um, you think that you are doing well. First term exams, you did got A in history. Great. Um, second term, great. You get to form two, complacency sets in and you are fallen. What is important is that you maintain the momentum, maintain the tempo. If you are getting A's, make sure you, you maintain the, get the A's till um, you, you finish with your exams so that you can get to the next level. So complacency set in. Out of that, there was what we called chieftaincy succession disputes. Everybody wanted to become a chief. And this, again, weakened the Ghana Empire. We've realized also that there was corruption. Corruption also caused Ghana Empire quite a lot. So the money that they were collecting and all that was coming in was not used for the intended purposes. So this also weakened Ghana Empire to the extent that it led to its fall. We've again said um, that there was, there was no more peace in, um, in Ghana. The empire was, was now um, left on its own with no peace. Why? This therefore led 
to outsiders to even come and attack. That is how come the Amara Bids um, from North Africa were able to penetrate and defeat Ghana. A Ghana Empire that had over 200,000 armed forces standing by now had been defeated. Why? Because the empire had become weak. And because of the divisions that had set in in Ghana, it made it easier for people from outside to attack Ghana and defeat it. So Ghana Empire was actually defeated. We've again said that out of these confusions that was taking place in Ghana Empire, um, the market centers which were bringing in money were actually moved away from Ghana. And as they were moved away from Ghana, then Ghana began to lose some money that were coming in from taxes. And so they lost it. And then it became weak and weaker and weaker. Also, the issue of, you know, tradition, religion, and, and, and the introduction of Islam, of which they could not see eye to eye, sort of, also weakened, or weakened the Ghana Empire much more. Because now Islam had come in, um, the traditional religion was in, and because they were not seeing eye to, the, uh, eye, to eye, what happened was that uh, it further weakened the, the empire because there was no more peace um, within the state. It is important to also add that at the end of the day, by 1235, as a result of the weaknesses, as a result of the corruption, as a result of the, the complacency, as a result of all the factors that we have raised as reasons which had caused the empire to be at it, on its feet, as we are discussing, was defeated by Mali. And so Mali took over as the next empire to emerge within the West Africa Sudan region. Now, the king of Ghana at the time was Sumanguru Kante. He was killed um, by Sundiata in AD 1235. And this finally, finally brought Ghana Empire on its knees. Now, as we are bringing our, our lessons to a close, and I am sure you've enjoyed Ghana Empire. In fact, from Ghana Empire, we got our name Ghana. And there are a lot of similarities that we'll learn when we get to the next level, when we get to second year, of which I'll come to you and we'll learn it in all joy and happiness. So I have some questions for you, my friends, and I employ you to take your exercise books um, and answer these questions. Answer these questions and answer them very well. The first question is that... Um, the Arabs refer to the savannah belt of West Africa as what? We mentioned this in, our, in my earlier presentation. The Arabs refer to the savannah belt of West Africa, Sudan, as what? Two, what was the actual name of ancient Ghana Empire? Yes. In which year did Ghana Empire fail? In which year did Ghana Empire fail to the extent that it was absorbed by Mali. One reason which led to the fall of, um, of Ghana Empire. State one reason. Or let me, let, let's make it two. State two reasons which led to the fall of Ghana Empire. State two reasons. Question five. Mention one, but I think we'll have to make it two. I mean, with the understanding that you have gotten today, let's make it two. Two reasons which enabled Ghana Empire to rise to prominence. Or oh, you want to make it three? Yes, I believe you. you. You should be able to tell us. So mention three reasons which led to the rise of Ghana Empire. Three reasons which enabled Ghana Empire to rise to prominence that we are studying today. I, when I began, I told you that we've looked at Egyptian civilization from north, we've looked at the Berber civilization, we've looked at the East African civilization, we've looked at, and by that I mean we've looked at um, Ethiopia, Axumai civilization, we've looked at the Swahilian civilization, now we are in West Africa. And the first civilization or greatness that we are studying is Ghana Empire. And I want you to write it down right away. Two, no, we said three, three reasons which enabled Ghana Empire to rise to prominence. So wherever you go, you have it and, you know, your chest is up there because you know that civilization actually has been 
on your continent, on my continent, and so we should be proud with it. So these are the questions I'll leave you with. I said question five, give us three now, not one. Question four, give us two, not one. Two reasons which led to the fall of Ghana Empire. Two, not one. Question five, give us three reasons, not one. Thank you. Now we've come to the end, the end and end of it, but it's not going to be the last. So all that I'm telling you is that be well, eat well, take care of yourself, COVID is still around, and be safe. Protect yourself, because if you're not safe, you'll not be able to write your West Africa exams to get your flying colors, to get an A in history. In fact, it's a promise you have to get an A in history. So that is it. We've come to the end. Um, thank you. I know that it's been a very fruitful encounter. I wish you all the best. My name once again, Frank Eduasari. And as always, it's history time, our history. We need to know our history as Africans. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.